The weather's turning cooler, and I tell you what, folks, that means it's time to start making soups, stews, and chili, without a doubt. Well, today I got a fantastic stew recipe for you. This is going to be a venison stew, but hey, if you don't have any deer meat laying around, by all means, it makes a great beef stew also. So anyways, hey, come in here, stick around, let me show you how to make my fantastic venison stew. Hey, folks, it's thick, it's hearty, it's tasty. You're going to want to learn the recipe. Hi, I'm Chef Johnny, and this is Texas Style Cuisine. Sure to appreciate you stopping by. Now, you can see I got out the cast iron today. I've got one of my camp ovens out, so we're gonna we're gonna cook this uh, right here in the in the fireplace behind me. But if you don't have a, a Dutch oven to do this in, folks, this will work fantastic on your stove top. It's a great stew, like I said, and, and it's a hearty stew. So, hey, come in here. Let me show you all the ingredients, the things that I do to get this. Uh, to be one of the, my family's favorite stews. So come in here close, let's look this over, all right? This looks like a whole lot. <laughs> really isn't that much, it's got a lot of bowls in here. What I'm gonna do first is I got some charcoal going back there, I'm gonna put it out. I'm gonna put my Dutch oven on there and let it start preheating for me because we're gonna brown this meat off first. And uh, I'm gonna do that and then I'll show you all these ingredients. We're gonna get started here. First things are is two cups of flour and I, heck, I don't know, a few pounds of deer meat there. I got a back strap in there and I got a package of stew meat. So three or four pounds, probably for closer to four pounds of uh, meat already cubed up, ready to go. This is the flour I'm going to use. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some all purpose seasoning in here. I got this in the other day and uh, Saucy Bottom Barbecue. You can find them. I'll put a link down below. Hey, real nice guy over there trying to get a business off the ground. You can use any all purpose seasoning you want, but go give a Saucy Bottom a try and, and see what you think about it. Also, we've used this on some barbecue items. It's real good on that too, but today it's making beef stew for us. So I'm just gonna take my flour and I'll put a couple of tablespoons of this in there. You could use uh, salt, pepper, garlic, right? But I wanna have a little bit of seasoning in my flour. Set that over to the side. Here's my meat. Like I said, there's, I don't know, three to four pounds of venison in there. And I'm just gonna shake some seasoning up on top of this. I wanna season my meat before I flour it. And you don't have to flour it. If you're trying to watch uh, carbs and you don't want any flour in this, then by all means, just put it meat in there, but we're gonna brown this first. But the flour, what it's gonna do is, it's gonna help it uh, thicken up your stew. And if it's not thick enough, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little roux and thicken it up some more because I like a, I like a nice hearty stew. So that's what we're going to do there. But there we go. That looks pretty good. So I've got my meat seasoned. Bring my flour back and I'm just going to drop all this meat down into that seasoned flour. And then I'm just going to toss it right here. Of course, you got me a bigger bowl. What do you think? I don't want a whole lot of flour on this though, just a little bit, just enough to coat it. It's mainly a, uh, a thickening agent. When it cooks, it's gonna help us thicken. And I'm gonna tell you, you wanna brown this real good. Uh, the more browning you do, the more flavor you're gonna have. Just like you can find my pot roast recipe, I'll put a link down below. I'm just gonna take some cooking oil and kinda coat the bottom good. That ought to be enough, let that heat up. Once that's hot, we're gonna start dropping in this meat. Now be careful, let that oil get good and hot and do not overload it. You wanna brown that meat, but you don't wanna overload your, uh, your pan. So, hey, let that oil get hot and then we're going to get our meat in. All right, I'm gonna start dropping my meat in. This pan's pretty hot, it's popping. Just take a little flour and drop it in there and see if you get a good sizzle. And if you do, it's ready to go. As you can see, this meat, I just kind of cut it up. It's bite sized. There's two pieces there, but don't have to cook this all the way through. What we're doing is we're, this is a dish that's getting braised. And technically, braising is a two method cooking, dry and wet. This is our uh, dry, and then we're going to put it in a little red wine and some broth. And uh, once that gets ready, we're going to come back here and let that. Just kind of cook up in that red wine and that broth.
Now, you can see that this is, uh, these are browning up nice. Look here. Got a nice brown coat on them. And so we're just gonna keep getting these last few. Almost got it all done. Here's the, there's the other ones, right? So anyway, got those all done. We're eating on this last little bit. Uh, then we're gonna get the other ingredients in here, kind of show you how we do that. Now, I've got all my meat back in there. What I'm gonna add to it is, is uh, about 16, maybe a little over ounces of uh, chicken broth. And uh, I have a recipe for this chicken broth. Put the video down below, it's something that I make up. Just cook down my chickens and I save that. We're gonna bring this back up to a boil and then we're gonna lower it to a simmer. Uh, wine, I'm gonna put about a cup of uh, red wine. This is just a Cabernet. Next thing is, is the Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire. Worcestershire sauce, I think is the way some people say it. But anyways, that's it. I'm gonna get a good quarter cup, maybe third of a cup in there. Give it some great flavor. And again, gonna bring this back up to a boil and let it come to a simmer. And for our uh, seasonings, I'm gonna use some more of this uh, saucy bottom. Let's see if I can come up here so we get a focus on it. There you go. It's their competition barbecue rub. That's what I'm gonna put in. I'm gonna put about two tablespoons of this in. So, I'm right here. About a tablespoon maybe, maybe a little shy. I'm gonna go a little bigger on the next one. Just gonna stir this in a little bit, get that seasoning down in our meat. That saucy bottom, I tell you what, I'll put a link down below. Nice guy, trying to kick a business off, get it going. And he's got some good products in there. That's just two of them. I've also got his chop sauce. I think he calls it chop powder or something like that, but it's a good one. But let's get this up to a boil and then we'll get back with you. You ought to be able to see pretty good that we're boiling. So I'm gonna come in here and put my lid on it. And we're gonna set this up for a, uh, about a 350 degree cook for about an hour. And so what I'm going to do is, is you take the size of your oven, that's a 10 inch oven, so double it, it's 20, I'm going to add 2 to that, that's 22, oh, 15 and 7, something like that, and we ought to be alright on this, and, uh, and let this cook, but so let's get uh, 15 up on top. Now, if you wanted to leave it on this trivet, you sure could, right, or you can put it down, I got a lot of coals down there, thinned them out already a little bit. Take a few more out, and I think I will today. I'm just gonna leave it on that trivet. Not a lot of wind here, so we don't have to worry about adjusting for wind. So there you have it. I'll see y'all in about 15 minutes. We're 30 minutes in. You can see I've made my first spin already. So I'm just gonna pick up my oven. Well, then we do this so we don't get any hot spots, guys. Is why we do it. Keeps the heat moving all the way around this uh, oven. Not quite as important on a stew or something like that, but it, it will burn on you if you're not careful. So we're back in our, in our starting position. I'm gonna take the lid off. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start adding in some of my vegetables an hour in. You can see I got a good little boil. I've got some chopped onion. I like some chopped onion just for flavor. Sometimes I'll put this in at the very beginning. Forgot to do that a while ago. But there it goes, that's in. Now I'm gonna put in my uh, celery and my carrots. Carrots are what, what takes the longest. As you can see too, I'll, boy, I hope y'all can see that. This is already getting really thick, my uh, sauce in here. There's my carrots. In with my, my celery. Nope. Now I'm just going to come in here and kind of grab some of my meat that's on the bottom. It's cooking a little bit faster than I want to. I'm going to take some of the heat off the bottom. Work this in real good. Don't want anything sticking down there. This is a little bit dry. I'm going to add in oh, about two cups of water. Bring my water level back up again. Maybe not quite two cups. And again, stir these in. We'll bring this back up to a boil and then try to lower it back down. Let's get our lid back up on top. 
and quit losing heat. We're gonna let this go about 15 or 20 minutes. We'll check it out the next turn if it's ready. I'm gonna add my potatoes and my onions at that time. And then we'll uh, let it go for about another 20 minutes to get those tender. And we'll be an hour and a half in. I'm thinking an hour and a half to two hours. This stew should be ready to go. All right, hour and a half in. Carrots ought to be getting pretty dang tender. I like to cook them longer than I do my potatoes. There you go, let's see this. Man, yeah, nice and thick. Now those carrots aren't tender yet, so that's good. I'm just gonna take a good bunch of red potatoes, and I'll tell you what, folks, and at times like this, I tell you, that's when you go, I should've used the 12 inch. Anyways, we've got this in there. We're gonna see if we can, uh, I'm gonna push these potatoes down in there. We're gonna see if we can uh, get some onions in. I may have to drain off a little bit of this juice. I'd cut up two big onions and you can tell they're not gonna fit I'm just going to take my dipper here and see if I can get out some juice. We can drop in some more onion. We're going to let this go another 20, 30 minutes. So those potatoes are nice and tender. When the potatoes are tender, we're done. Now, I do have some tomatoes that I usually put on top, but you can see we may not have room tonight. We're just gonna see what happens. Let's get the lid back up on top. You can see I'm getting a lot of ash built up on top. Ash will insulate that lid and it will not allow it to, uh, to penetrate the heat in there. So what I'm gonna do is, we'll move some of these live coals off, take a whisk broom, brush that off, put some fresh briquettes on top, for this last half hour cook and throw a few underneath. Here we go. You can tell I cleaned up. I was gonna show y'all. Whisk broom. Make sure you get the ones that are, are, you know, the regular old straw bristles. Plastic one will melt. So these won't melt. If you leave them on there, they'll burn. So just dust it off. That's why I dusted it off with. We're uh, about 20 minutes into the potatoes. I'm gonna check those. If I can find room, I'm gonna dump some of my tomatoes in there. If not, well, they're just gonna have to get left out this week. Y'all saw how full it was a while ago, but. Let's get the lid off and see uh, what it looks like. Well, you can see it's nice and thick. Potatoes are not tender yet. And I'm not sure I can get anything else in there. These tomatoes just really add a richness to it. See if we can get part of them in, maybe. No, I'm gonna overflow this pot, but they just add so much to this dish. It's great to drop them in for about the last 15 minutes. It's gonna add to our flavor. It's gonna add to our richness. Did you look at that? Is that pot full? Should have got the 12-inch pot, without a doubt. Man. All right, that's about all I dare try to get in. Look at it overflowing. Boy, I messed up a good duck coming. It's going to take some cleaning. Yeah, right now. But it's on. Put a few more coals on top. We're going 15 minutes. That'll give me about two hours total, just like I thought. And uh, we'll give this a try. Here we go. Been about a half an hour total cook time here on these potatoes. So let's check them out. See, we still got a little stewing going on. Those potatoes and tomatoes added a lot of volume to this, but those tomatoes are really going to add some good flavor. Oh yeah, see that? My potato cut. That's perfect. This stew is ready. Let's see if we can uh, dish up a bowl and let y'all see how it turned out. We can get some in here. Potatoes. Boy, I tell you what, this is going to be a hearty stew. I told y'all it was hearty. Some of that deer meat in there. And if you look, that thickened up nice. Let's give this a sample. 
There you have it, folks. Great, great bowl of stew here. This is looking like it's going to be good. There's our deer meat. I bet you it just uh, tendered up. I got a small piece of deer meat. I'm going to throw a carrot on there, a little onion, a little celery. It's uh, still kind of hot, but we're going to see if it's uh, edible or not. Give this a try. Ooh, it's still hot. Tomato is great. That meat is tender. Deer meat is so, so tender. And I tell you what, that saucy bottom, all purpose, and then their barbecue rub was very good on it. Only thing I'd say this needed was maybe a little more salt. If we would have added some salt to it, it would have been perfect. But uh, flavor's good. And I tell you what, this venison, and remember, you can do it with beef if you want to. Um, you can do it with just about any other meat. It's, it's a great stew the way we do this. And family loves it. I enjoy it. Let me try this potato real quick. I haven't had potatoes in over a year or so. I'm off my diet officially. Um, let's see, November 12th. All right. Mm, the, uh, the, the colder months are getting here, folks. Like I said, we got stew today. We're going to be doing some chili recipes. I'm gonna put uh, a chili recipes down below. I'm gonna put some potato soup recipe down below. I got be looking for some other soups we're gonna be doing here real quick and uh, and find those because this is time of the year for something warm and something hearty and this is a fantastic meal. So you give it a try. If you give it a try, hey, let me know. Always do like to know what y'all are cooking up and what y'all try and what y'all think about my recipes. And remember to share this. Number one way to support this channel is to uh is to share share my videos interaction like comment subscribe and share 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 so we can grow this channel up to something big but hey thanks for stopping by always do appreciate it i am chef johnny and we're gonna see y'all down the road on texas style barbecue and cuisine so long everybody <laughs>